Okay. How do I say I'm having a great time at Kingston Ponder River? Me they have a good time up on the river. And we have a dance to it, you know. Okay. Pond the river, pond the bank, kill la dam dam, dam da dam. On the river, pond the bank. Yeah, man. After all the hard work, Janet needed a break from the capital and invited me to her favourite secret getaway in St Elizabeth Parish. She had arranged a boat to take me to Sister Lou's, which is well hidden along the Black River. Janet revealed something just after we boarded. So you can't swim? Yeah. So what's going to happen if we capsize? You're going to save me, Janet. I'm going to save you. I'm, pro I'm prioritising the baby. <laughs> oh, I have forgot. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> It's only just, like three I'm, foot here, yeah. right? We, you sure about that? It's only three foot here. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. Don't worry, Janet, I've got your back. All right, good girl, good girl, good girl. <laughs> I love it. Ooh. Tell me about Sister Luz. Wow. Rustic. Okay. Are you okay? I would say that um, if you just went there yeah. and looked at it, there would be nothing to write on about. Okay. However, it is special. It is somewhere that I go if I want to have crab back, which is my favorite meal. Crab what? Crab back. Yes. I'm noticing you're a little bit uncomfortable there. I am, but don't worry. Because I, I'm, I'm accustomed to, to going in yachts, not these small boats, you know? <laughs> I can't wait for us to get there. <laughs> How long is this boat ride? About 15 minutes. You've got to remember this was your suggestion. I know. Black River is one of the longest rivers in Jamaica, and the name comes from the darkness of the riverbed caused by decomposing vegetation. We were cruising upriver from the mouth, amongst the mangroves, spotting many species of bird, fish, and crocodiles. We arrived at the rustic Sister Lou's, and I couldn't wait to taste the legendary crab back. You can put it right here, my darling. She has given us forks, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't recommend it. Why not? This is finger food. Why yes. would you come all this way? to eat crab bag and use a fork. <laughs> so tell me, why do you love Jamaica? The diversity of this country. There is so much that this country has to offer and that is why I love it so much. But most of all, I would say that the people in Jamaica are some of the friendliest that you'll ever meet in your entire life. I'm sure you've been meeting some of them. I love the people in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I could sit and listen to them talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing my stay in the area, I woke the next morning at Jake's, my hotel. It was peaceful and beautiful. I felt so lucky to be there. I shared breakfast with the owner, Sally Hensel, whose family have been based here since the 1940s. Sally grew up on this beach and in 1965 married Perry Hensel, who directed The Harder They Come, Jamaica's first feature film. So why do you love Treasure Beach? Well, I was practically born here. Um, my parents built their beach cottage here the year I was born. But it's uh, just a little fishing village, you know. It's not the tourist belt of Jamaica, which is on the north coast. So it's a little bit of the real Jamaica? Yes, yeah, just a little fishing village. Why do you love Jamaica? Well, I was born here and I've traveled a lot and I never wanted to live anywhere else. Right in the heart of Jamaica's sugarcane belt in St. Elizabeth is Appleton Rum Estate and Distillery. Master blender Joy Spence invited me for a special personal tour. Hi, you must be Joy. Hi, Camilla. Welcome to Africa hey. Estate. Good Jamaican hug. Well, good Jamaican hug? Yes. It's unusual to find a female master blender. Yes, it is. Actually, when I became the master blender 17 years ago, we realized that I was the first female in the entire spirit industry. When I joined the company, I really didn't drink rum. But I've been here for 30 years, and I've grown to love rum and Appleton. It is my favorite rum. I shouldn't tell you that. I should make, make you work for that, I that know. admission. But well, I'm so glad. Let me give you a hug for that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. Let's see. So this is Paz, and Paz is actually going to mill some sugarcane to get some sugarcane juice, which you see is being collected in that. But all he has to do is walk around and around. Just walk around and around, and at the end, he gets a nice reward. What does he get? Sugarcane. He gets the sugarcane? <laughs> yes. And this was how it was done in the olden days. But, but of not course, anymore, yeah? Absolutely not. All right. 
Human labor could also do the job. Here we go. Wow, that donkey must be strong. Okay. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> getting more juice, getting more juice. Go, 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 Camilo. I'm going, I'm going. We have to make a case of rum, you know. We have to make a case of rum. <laughs> yes. I'll be happy with it a shot. <laughs> okay, so we get a reward. Yeah, a reward. Cheers. The sugar cane juice. Cheers to sugar cane juice. Put on. <laughs> no rum yet. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to take it to where we're going to boil the juice that we just made. Mm -hmm. And this is a copper oh. kettle. And we've now boiled this, and now we have molasses. Oh, it smells really good. Which is the starting material for rum. We actually call it Jamaican Viagra. J Jamaican Viagra? So, now that you've found it out, would you like to taste it? I do want to <laughs> taste it. So, so you're guaranteeing me the same effects? Very much so. Oh, that's really nice. Mm. You know, from cradle to grave, right? That's the story of rum in Jamaica. When the baby's born, we put a little rum on the mold so the baby doesn't get any infections. When we start growing up as children and we have the flu, parents make a little hot toddy with rum. When you're building your home, you have some rum. We have to sprinkle the rum around the corners to bless it. And then when you die, before they dig the grave, have to sprinkle some rum again. With 260 years of handcrafted tradition, Appleton's unique copper pots add a very distinctive character to their rums. And this is where we collect our rum at 86%. 86% here? Yes. Have you ever tried 86%? Yeah. What does it taste like? Fiery. <laughs> it tastes like fire. <laughs> yeah. My tour finished with the best part, blending. So you have four rums, pour out a little of each, just nose and taste. And then based on your blending skills, you're going to blend directly into your blending bottle. Okay. Label the Camilla blend. Okay. And then Based you're on your formula, you're going to fill it right up to here. And then you're going to taste yeah. some. That's right. Pour a small amount and okay. I'll give you a score. There's no hard and fast rule. It's no just my personal your preference. Scale. All right. OK. How the flavor profiles change. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Um, OK. Yep. OK, and that's quite sweet. Okay. You're getting carried away with that, you know, Camilo. Well, this is really vanilla -y. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Correct. You have a good nose. I love vanilla. As most females do. Actually, most females do? Yeah, women have better sensory skills than men, although they don't like to hear that, but it's true. OK. Mm. Am I full, do you think? Yep. So you're going to cook it and just shake it very gently, because you don't want the alcohol vapors coming up too much, because okay. I need to appreciate the flavors that you have inside the room. Once, twice? That's, no, that's fine. All right. You ready for a bit of Camilla? Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. going to do the first okay. nose for the... OK, so here, getting a hint of orange with a little of your banana and coconut. Yeah. So I'm not going to swirl it. OK. To see what we're going to get now. Subtle vanilla and a little oak. But, of course, the final test is the taste, so... Your nose is amazing. This is awesome. Oh, yes. 9.5. 9.5. Yeah. Great. Woo. Can no, I have it's another very hug? good. Oh, sure. Can I have another hug? <laughs> it's lovely. I feel like I've had a really authentically Jamaican time here in St. Elizabeth Parish. The people are, just as they say, very hard working. And it does feel like almost every day is a Sunday. In fact, I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. My next destination was a day's drive away on the eastern side of the island, Porton Parish, and its biggest town, Port Antonio. I checked into Mockingbird Hill, a boutique eco-hotel with the character of a home. Owner Barbara displays her artworks of women around the property. I joined her for a sundowner and a chat. So why should people come to Port Antonio? It is probably the most beautiful corner of Jamaica. It's the most peaceful part of Jamaica, the lowest criminality rate on island. When people dream of the tropics and sort of forest and beach, and then this is Port Antonio. So how would you describe Jamaican women? Very strong. 
And it's a very strange kind of situation in Jamaica because actually it's a very patriarchal country, but it is actually the Jamaican woman that keeps this country together. Women actually run things, but men think they do. From what I had seen so far, Barbara was right. Women here are strong in their own way and also very sexually empowered. That night in Port Antonio, I finally got the chance to check out a dance hall street party, and I will certainly never forget it. The next morning after breakfast, I met with Renee Simpson. Hi Renee, hi, hi I'm you? Camilla. Hi. Good, good, Welcome. good. Welcome, nice to meet you. Renee writes Pretty Porty, a blog about Portland. She loves this part of Jamaica and told me why it was so special. All of Jamaica is beautiful, but Port Antonio has this laid back charm that you won't find readily anywhere else. So we kind of approach things with a little bit more of a casual fare than, than usual, than is Jamaican. So I think that's the only difference. It's a very historic town. It is where tourism really started in Jamaica, because in the late 19th century, we had bananas that we shipped to Boston and other ports in the United States. And it was on these ships heading back to Jamaica that the first set of tourists would come to Jamaica, and that was in Port Antonio, so. Renee and I headed into town and to Love Lane. All over Jamaica, I had noticed amazing hair and nails. On Renee's recommendation of a local nail artist, I opted to get mine done Jamaican style. Oh, I'm all right. Okay, this is my friend Camilla. Hi, Hello, Camilla. Hey. Have her nails done. Yes, we please. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Design and polish? Yes, Miss Dan. Okay, and as, as Jamaican looking mm. as possible. <laughs> Why do Jamaican ladies like having such good nails? Just because of the dance or culture, I guess. Yeah. To stay pretty. I was at a party last night. I saw some ladies dancing there last night. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in my life. That is dance hall. That is dance hall? Yes, yes. How did it start? People just wanted to... Dance, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if you can call it dancing. <laughs> I might call it something <laughs> else. Gyrating. Gyrating. Yeah, I saw gyrating. Yeah. I saw many things. I saw a woman putting their heads between mm -hmm. their heads. Skillful. Not all of us, but not, not all of yes, you. I can say we, because I am a Jamaican. What do you think of Jamaican men, honestly? Mm -hmm. You can tell me, we're all women. Yes, because I do have one. You have one? Yes, some of them are OK, and some of them are just like any other man. What do you mean, just like any other man? Bad. <laughs> Full of girls and all of them stuff there. Lack of respect. But anywhere in the world you go, you do find that. Thank you. Can I hold them up, please? So I've got yes, <laughs> well, thank you so much, oh, yeah. Misha. You're amazing. You've oh, made my nails look great. Yes, I'm just going to get my money to pay you. All right. What do you think, Renee? Oh, these are beautiful. They are beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you are really Jamaican. Now I'm really Jamaican. Yeah. Now that I was integrated into local lady culture, Renee took me to lunch at a beach off the main tourist maps. So welcome to Winifred's Beach. This is one of my favorite places to hang out in Portland and it has some of the best food that you'll taste in Portland as well. Renee was right. A plate of delicious food and a beach filled with mainly locals meant that I'd been let in on a secret spot. Portland was fast becoming my favorite place in Jamaica. Everywhere in Jamaica, the air wafts with the aroma of jerk spiced barbecue, and I had become addicted. Portland is famous for its jerk cooking, and I was lucky to be meeting the Queen of Jerk. Hi, I'm Camilla. Hi, I'm Doreen Lawrence. You're the Queen of Jerk, right? Yes, I am. So why are you the Queen of Jerk? Because I make the best jerk chicken in Portland, and the secret is not in the chicken, it's in the sauce, and I make my own personalized sauce. So are you going to tell me your secret? I have my private, secret, private ingredients that I use. I can show you some right now. Maybe afterwards I could become the princess of jerk. 